And this episode, we get one step closer to throwing the Lincoln Mark 7 8.8 back under Project Low Fairmont because we continue on rebuilding the rear calipers. Welcome to the channel. My name's Grant Tommy. This is Straight Six Fan, where I like to focus on budget minded, relatable, creative builds. A little something I like to call off the hot rodding. And today we are going to get back on Project Blow Fairmont, the $4,000 project car. I've got my stand upside down. And we are trying to finish up rebuilding the rear calipers for the Lincoln Mark 7 rear end. Um, I, that's not to say that nothing has happened on this car since the last time you saw one of my videos. Um, in fact, last Sunday, my buddy Mike came over, helped me set the pinion flange to the proper preload. Uh, you know, that was all fallout from replacing the pinion seal. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave an info card up there. Uh, but also on Monday, uh, I was trying to get some some little bit of work done. I did get uh, the pistons sent my way from RockAuto.com. Um, I will get into that here in a little bit. But also on Monday, I had. I'm going back to the dual shear tabs that were originally on the Lincoln Mark 7. This is for the shock mount Mark 7 rear end. Um, after I showed taking them off for the Fairmont mounts, the single stud, and again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there will be an info card up here. Um, I got some comments both on YouTube as well as a Facebook um, group I'm in for Fairmonts. Somebody said basically, the dual shear tab, which makes sense, dual shear is always better than single, uh, it's going to help with wheel hop and things like that. But again, today we are back on to rebuilding the rear calipers, and again we have new pistons, so let's get the camera a little closer so you can see what's going on. As mentioned, I went to rockauto.com to get replacement pistons uh, to replace the much pitted pistons. Now, the only disappointment I had in ordering these, and they were relatively cheap, was they did not come with the screw assembly inside the piston, hence probably why they were cheaper. Um, so I noticed inside of these guys, it looks like they're held in by this snap ring. And well, of course, I didn't have a snap ring pliers. So thanks to Amazon.com, snap ring plier set. So yes, while I saved myself some money, um, I did have to buy, well, at age 34, this is tools I probably should own at this point anyway. So at least with spending $20 on a set of tools, this is something I will have for the long run. So with that, um, as I mentioned, this is the other piston and I was able to um, take it apart previously. However, I'm going to, uh, I left the, uh, this one together because uh, I believe I got the order of these pieces out of order. And so I'm going to carefully take apart the second one just to make sure I get these ordered right um, back in for uh, before I take this out for this one. Uh, I did have this loosened earlier this past week, um, but I noticed there is another seal um, inside on this thing. Let's see if I can't. There we go. Uh, that needs replaced as well. And so, going back over to my kit, It does not appear that I have 
replacement seal, so this will just have to work as is in the new piston. Okay, so ever so carefully, remove the snap ring. It appears this washer, or whatever you want to call it, is the top one. Which it looks like this has a little bit of a concave shape to it. I don't know how well that shows up, but the dome side is up. Followed by the silver looking kind of bearing. Followed by the other, the other washer, which this one does not have a different, this one does not have a different color like the one on the first set I took out, so. And then way back in the back is the sort of ball bearing setup, which appears goes in there um, facing up like this. So with that, we are gonna start replicating that over on the new piston. Let's press that in. We go one. So this black one has the concave shape to it, so we will throw in this guy. And I do intend on washing this down with brake clean here in a minute. I just want to make sure I've got this in right. Followed by that guy, followed by this guy. And then from there, we can just place the snap ring back in and we should be good to go reinstalling our piston. And with that, we have both pistons repaired, restored, back together. So time to uh, put these bad boys back into the, their calipers. So previously I got, this week I got the, uh, the new seal in on the um, caliper itself and I'm kind of trying to think through the best way to do this seal. Like obviously it's going to be kind of hard, you got kind of want to get it started down in there but you also have to get it around uh, here on the piston. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to of course loop this up with brake fluid, what I'm thinking is because this extends like so. I'm going to get this seal around there and then slowly work the piston in and then that way I can work on the seal right here. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. This is the first time I've ever done it, so um, it's nothing that says this is going to be the right way, the best way, whatever. Let's find out. We've spun the piston in as far as we can by hand, and if you follow me on Instagram, I did an Instagram live not all too long ago, kind of showing a garage hack, and that is, this is the chuck or the wrench for my mini grinder, which just so happens to be the proper spacing uh, on the piston to work as a wrench. This way you don't have to go to O'Reilly's or wherever to uh, loan a tool, rent a tool. Um, they have, these rear calipers have or pistons because they're twisting have a special um, kind of plunger tool. So anyway, just uh, there's a little little hack for you. So I, I broke down and went and got the tool from O'Reilly's anyway because while this was working, it just kind of felt like uh, I was cross-threading it on the way in, which I backed it off and confirmed it wasn't, but. 
Um, it was also taking forever, so this is definitely the right tool. I would say use this only for backing off the piston um, when the air doesn't work. That's what I showed on Instagram Live, but uh, this is definitely the way to do it. Um, so tool rental programs are there for a reason, so um, yeah, this is, this is much better. I also experimented with, um, it made more sense to put the seal on down here first and then we will um, get this the top end in the groove uh, when we get it a little bit closer over here. And with that we have one caliper completely rebuilt now. I must admit, well first off I need to go test fit them with the pads on, see if I got that piston far enough back, but I must admit um, I did tear one of the seals um, because I was installing it wrong. Well, I wasn't installing it wrong, I guess. I just was using too much pressure, and I shouldn't have. I don't know if you can see that right here by my thumbnail. Uh, but anyway, so the objective is is to reuse the seal on the other one, but um, for now, I just need to uh, kind of go test with this uh, on the axle and see if I need to push that piston in any further. Now before I go test fitting everything back up, I do have to beat back into shape this, um, well, I don't exactly remember what they call a splash guard, I think. It's not like a dust shield. Anyway, um, between transporting it in my truck, uh, you know, like to get a car wash uh, to clean off at one time and bring it home, as well as moving it on and off the jack stands, it would fall. So. It basically would just land like that. So anyway, I need to straighten this out real fast um, and then we'll get to uh, test fit and everything up. And with that, I'm pretty happy uh, for a budget build. This is, uh, I think this is good. And so there's the completed assembly and we've got that piston pushed in far enough to uh, get this disc in and out. Now, it looks like it's in fairly good shape, so I'm gonna probably get it turned at O'Reilly's. Um, I don't feel any ridges, it's just obviously all this surface rust. So we'll see. Um, they did say they were like $13 a rotor to, uh, so I, I might check to see what the price of new ones are, um, because if it's like, it's been $22 for a new one, or it's been 13, we'll see, we'll see. And so that does it. We have both calipers rebuilt. And um, I gotta say, it wasn't the most difficult thing in the world. A lot of people talked about, uh, oh man, it's such a pain in the arse. Now the seals, yeah, they weren't the easiest to deal with, um, but they're doable. So uh, guys, uh, I hope that was informative for you. I know there's a lot of videos out there on rebuilding calipers. Seems like most of the ones I've seen have been from front calipers. So. Hoping this uh, the twist style piston makes it a little bit different. But if you found it valuable, like, comment, share, or subscribe to my channel. Uh, all those previous three options to the video. Uh, but anyway, um, it helps the channel out for sure when you do any of those ones. I don't really care which one you do as long as you do one. But if you want to support my channel even further, I would recommend going to my Spreadshirt store link below and picking yourself up a straight six fan pistons tee or a 30 60s 198 slant six inspired t-shirt that's going to do it for this episode until next time peace out